and welcome to this edition of Minstrels on the Block, where we bring you the finest singer-songwriters in the Valley area. This week's special guest can only be described as fire on the strings, Mr. Miguel Moritz. How's it going, man? Uh, pretty good. Miguel, how you doing? Glad to have you on the show. Thank you. I'm glad to be here, finally. <laughs> finally. <laughs> it's only taken, what, 200 weeks? Mm -hmm. <laughs> pretty much. Scheduling. Now, <clears throat> tell me, Miguel, about yourself. Where were you born? I was born in um, Glendale, California, mm -hmm. in uh, 88. Then before, before I turned two years old, my family moved back to the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So I grew up in the Philippines. Cool. And let's say about two years ago, I moved back here to the States, moved to LA, then ended up joining the army. So kind of been moving around. Now tell me a little bit, you know, I've I'm, I'm not what you would call a world traveler. I recently was able to take a, a nice trip of overseas. What's it, what's it like in the Philippines? Um, it's a tropical island and it's, it's really nice. It's, um, uh, what do you call that? It's a very musical country. Nice. There's lots of music going around, lots of... Well, they say it's a poor country and everything's cheap. Mm -hmm. But... I love it, you know, mm. it's home. Well, you had me at tropical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice beaches, nice women, so <laughs> hey. can't go wrong with and that. And a, a theme in this show is why people do it is for the women. <laughs> mm. Exactly. Now, tell me a, bit, a little bit about your parents. What did they do? Uh, well, they're both into sales, mm -hmm. and that's pretty much all I know about them. Mm. So my mom raised me because my, my parents separated when I was a kid, I so... I was raised with my mom, by my mom, and my dad is kind of like a consultant mm -hmm. with sales, but I don't get to see him right. much, really. Well, now, did you come from a musical family? Because, I mean, looking at you today, you would think that you were steeped in it from birth. Well, uh, I've <clears throat> always liked music. That's, mm -hmm. that's definitely true, but uh, I, my family wasn't really into any instruments or mm -hmm. any arts really but like i said my parents are separated when mm -hmm. my dad left we kind of both picked up the guitar at the same time so that's when i started wow. learning it kind of became my father figures the guitar i got you so you know my mom was a single mom raising four kids so wow you know i had to find time to, <laughs> by myself because yeah. it was we lived in a small place right mm -hmm. yeah. now tell me about some of your to lay some groundwork, tell me about some of your early musical influences. What kind of music were you exposed to when you were young? Mm, well, when I was, my mom and dad used used to listen to a lot of like, um, like eighties pop, like let's mm -hmm. say Holland Oates, uh, lots of Sergio Mendes, Bossa Nova, you know, mm -hmm. and you know that's what I listened to growing up. So there was a small, a tiny pop and tiny jazz right. background to it. <clears throat> and you know, as, I, as you grow older, you try to rebel against what you want, right. what you used to like. Yeah. So I eventually listened to a lot of rock, mm -hmm. lots of Led Zeppelin, you know, Hendrix, this classic rock. Right. Mm -hmm. Then down from that, like, uh, I kinda dug my way down to the, to the blues. So moved to the Beatles, down to the like, uh, what else? Like Muddy Waters, all that, and yeah. Robert Johnson. So, you know, and since then I just kept looking and looking for music, anything I can listen to. You know, uh, friends would bring over their iPods, I just copy whatever they got. Yeah. It doesn't matter what it was, it doesn't matter if I liked it the first time I listened to mm. it, I just copy everything. Because there, there's, I've always had this thing on this thought that no matter how bad a piece of music is, it's still music, you mm -hmm. can still get something from it. Right. And down the road, you might like it at some point. You, know? right. you might be in a weird mood where you're really into mm -hmm. Indian, Indian music or right. you're really into, let's say, super pop music like Lady Gaga, whatever. Yeah. You know? Alejandro. <laughs> <laughs> it all depends on what, what you're feeling, you know, what your mm -hmm. current influences are what you're doing with your life, you know, right. so all music is music. Friends, a true connoisseur of music. Now, tell me, what, what was it that kicked it for you? What was it that made you decide, 
the defining moment that you said, yes, this is, this is what I want to tackle? Hmm. I was probably 15 years old when I started taking guitar seriously. Because, mm -hmm. uh, all right, this is, this is a weird theory, but I believe there's like steps for a musician to become a musician. Mm -hmm. First one is to pick up an instrument, right? Well, first step is to listen, of right, right. then to pick up the instrument. Then you want to learn how to play. So first of all, you play with your, your friends, you mm -hmm. know, just to, to enjoy yourself. You're just curious. Right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> then you start playing because you want to be, you want to be good at it. You know, right. you just, mm -hmm. you finally enjoy what you're doing and you, yeah. you, you want to be better at it. Then you move on and you play for the women. Right. Everyone goes through that phase where they just play for the women. I still do. <laughs> and if you can, most people stop there. Yeah. And you know, you can stop there and you'll be fine. You'll be a good musician. It doesn't matter. You'll get what you want, of course. Right, right. But if you can climb a little bit more right. <laughs> into yourself, you know, then you just play because you hear something. You just want to play what you're hearing inside your head. Right. You just want to create that sound because if no one's going to put it down, you know. It always stays in your head. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, when I was 15, I think listening to, listening to Eric Clapton and John Frusciante mm -hmm. by, uh, Frusciante is uh, from Red Hot Chili Peppers. Mm -hmm. And I just listened to those two guitar players since then and I just got really into it. Oh, wow. Now, a lot of people, you know, like you, you said, they go through the steps, they hear music, they want to play it, they play with their friends, they get better at it, then they play for the women and they stop there. What makes you continue on beyond the, the, the playing for the women? Or whatever uh, point? Simply, it's you're getting something from the music that you're not getting from women. Right. You know? Or anywhere else for that. Or anywhere else, exactly. So, uh, you, you, let's say uh, when you're young, let's say when I was in college, you, you play a lot in mm -hmm. gigs, you know. It doesn't matter if you play great or you suck. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter if you sing the words right or do all the notes right. If you got that, you know, if mm -hmm. you got that, when it, that show done, yeah. you know, if you got that force, the, the women will respond, right. you know? And eventually you just, you know, is this what I'm doing it for, you mm -hmm. know? And you go home, you go home with women, you play, you sleep with them, they, they fall asleep, and you find yourself still playing, playing guitar, you know? Right. They wake up, they, they cuddle with you, and you're still holding on to your guitar, and you know, it's, it's not something I actually said, all right, I'm going to do this for the music now. Mm -hmm. mm. And I, that's not what I'm doing it for. It's not like I said that straight out. It just, it's something that happens mm -hmm. and you just notice it. Like, like I'm doing this for the music now. Yeah, yeah once the, uh, if, if after the certain activities are done and you, you are still holding the guitar, then mm -hmm. you realize that that's, yeah. that's your true love. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, absolutely. Now. The, before we go to one of your songs, the most important heavyweight question of the show, and this is the one that rocks worlds and that, that shakes foundations of, of cities, Elvis or the Beatles? Mm. All right. Beatles. 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 The most common answer to that question. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm pop-minded. Yeah. So I liked every single one of the Beatles songs. Every single one. I've listened to every single album, every single song. Nice. The thing with Elvis, I think I, think I can't give this judgment, the question, any right judgment, because mm -hmm. uh, I didn't really listen to Elvis, like, intently, you know. Mm -hmm. I... I listened to his songs, you know, on the radio, but right. I didn't buy all the Elvis CDs right. and listen to them one by one. So, when I get the chance, then I ask the question. Days. Yeah, I'm still in that mode myself. Mm -hmm. Now, before we, one last thing before we go to to uh, 
uh, one of your songs. What was your education on guitar? Are you self-taught? Did you? Um, well, at first I just bring, brought my guitar to school and just, you know, learned what I could from my friends. Mm -hmm. Then eventually I started learning with my cousin. Same thing, he'd just teach me a song and I'll play mm -hmm. it, then he'll teach me another one and I'll play it. Then finally I just started listening to the radio. Mm -hmm. And doesn't matter what song I played, I just played the song and you know, tried cool. to get it and spent hours and hours oh. just trying to pick up the simplest chords, you know? Yeah. yeah. And then you find out, oh, that's A. That's yeah. what A sounds <laughs> like. At first, you know what it looks like, but it, not till you you figure something out with right. it. So, so I've just been doing that ever since for like probably 14 years now. Wow. Very cool. I'll tell you what, let's look at the culmination of all of Miguel's background and we'll be back right after this. Uh, this first song is called Amp. Hope you like it. You're deaf, you're deaf, you're deaf, yeah You're subject to such rude abuse Something to desecrate You're object of my hate Despise the fact you'll never move no longer serve your purpose Time to make yourself useful again What more can one such as you do? No choice but rest with pieces You're my lazy lover for night Foolish recognition You wouldn't mind I'll hold you to me every night What is your condition? You wouldn't know Oh, excuse me while I please myself with you You're crying though as if you feel Bloody butch and lifeless Flesh still warm Better pray that to my heart will heal Better pray that soon my heart would heal. Yeah, better pray that soon my heart would heal. If you don't satisfy me, you know the poor bastard's gonna get some foolish recognition. You wouldn't mind. I'll hold you to me every night. What is your condition? You wouldn't know. Oh, excuse me while I please myself of you Foolish recognition You wouldn't mind I'll hold you to me every night What is your condition? You wouldn't know Oh, excuse me while I please myself And in the news today, whoops, there doesn't seem to be any news. So tune in Kaleidoscope, 8 o'clock Saturdays, with me, Will Dockery, as I talk to all the local artists of note. I don't know about art, you don't know about art. So let's tune in and learn about it together, shall we? That's on EATV7, Cable TV of East Alabama. Be there. Hello and welcome back to this edition of Minstrels on the Block, special guest, Mr. Miguel Juarez. So Miguel, tell me a little bit about what you've got going on now. Mm, well, right now I'm, uh, I'm actually working for the Army, mm -hmm. so I have uh, just enough time to practice and play, but I try, I try my best to squeeze out all the music I can. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm playing with this band, or 
an R&B band called Life Unlimited right now. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a really good band. They're quite established in the area with like um, Phoenix City and Columbus. Yeah. And it's, it's uh, just me, a drummer, a bass player, and keyboard player. And we wrote, we've been rotating through so many singers. We've had six singers in the past four months. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's a really, really tight-knit group, so you've got to be on point with everything. Yeah. So they fired five singers, <clears throat> two keyboard players, and a guitar player since I've been there. So I've been I've been practicing like, <laughs> like crazy. You know. Make sure you don't get the pink slip mm -hmm. too. <laughs> yeah. Now, how did you run into these guys? They obviously sound like a, a very professional-minded group. Mm -hmm. They want a certain sound. Well, uh, since I've been playing around in this area for like probably around two years now, almost. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just uh, your name gets around because, yeah. uh, like I told you earlier, we were talking earlier that. That's what I love about Columbus. It's a tight knit musical community. Like mm -hmm. it's an actual community of musicians. Yeah. It's not a. It's not. Uh, you know, music is not just about the money, the the business, the industry. Mm -hmm. It's about the community, people playing together, learning from each other. You know. Yeah. So, yeah, just been playing around, and your name gets thrown out there. You get calls. Hey, we need a guitar player for this gig. We have this many songs and it's going to pay this much. Right. And you have to be ready for that because yeah. you sometimes you get like a night notice like you, we have a gig tomorrow, these are the songs mm -hmm. and you don't know any of them. Right. So either you got to be really good with listening and jumping into <laughs> it or you're really fast picking up when you can listen to the song real quick and just learn yeah. it, you know. So yeah, I've been going around through lots of musicians here and my name just got thrown out there. I got a call one day. Well, that's cool. Now, earlier we talked about uh, uh, you lived in LA for a while and, and the music scene there being different from the music scene in the Valley. And this would be interesting for, for musicians around uh, the Phoenix City, Columbus area um, who have dreams of move, going, traveling to other places, you know, you know, California, other places. What it, <clears throat> Tell again what the difference is between LA's music scene and the Valley's music scene is. All right. Uh, well, from what I saw, because I only lived there for like a few months, probably mm -hmm. six months. From what I saw, it's just the music scene there is so huge. It's just so big. Mm -hmm. It's so commercialized that there's not really enough time to just for musicians to sit down and just play. Right. That's what I've been. That's my personal experience. Mm -hmm. It's you have to be, you have to play exactly what what the audience is looking for. Right. You know, you have to play it exactly the way they want it to. You got to be marketed, dressed how you know. Right. So it kind of wasn't for me, but I wouldn't know because I didn't live there all my life. Right. So right. there might be scenes there where it's like mm -hmm. you know all super artsy fartsy whatever. Right. But yeah. What I'm saying is just, I like the simple, the simple music community here in Columbus where no one's, no one's really trying to steal your show, you know, right, no one's yeah. trying to get ahead of anyone. Everyone's helping each other out to play, you know, promoting each other. More organic rather than Exactly. Mechanized. More <laughs> orga organic, that's the word for it. Now... Where would you like to go with your music? Now, you're obviously a, a phenomenal guitar player, great musician, and uh, you've obviously put a lot of time and effort into it. What are your, what are your goals? What are you reaching for? Hmm. That's a question I can't answer, Ron. I really don't know. I just, I just want to go. Mm -hmm. That's it. I just don't want to stop playing. You know, I don't know where this is going, but as long as I keep moving, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, for people that might be, might catch this on, on YouTube or whatever, who don't live here, when you came to, to this area, tell me a little bit about your experience as far as coming into the music scene and, and what kind of reception you got, how things were for you. Okay, uh, well, when I first got here, I spent, I spent like my first year in Fort Benning 
just not going out at all because mm -hmm. you know I'm still new to the area I'm still kind of shocked that yeah. you know the army thing mm -hmm. then I met this uh, mm -hmm. this army buddy of mine uh, Chris Smith was his name I found out he played so we jammed a little bit and before that I had no knowledge of what an open mic was mm -hmm. and I'd you know so I was afraid to go around looking for right. musicians and he brought me to Soho over in Exit 7 and he brought me over for open mic and I met Tripp and Vicky and mm -hmm. all the all the guys there you know they were really really accepting you know yeah. really supportive of the music They're like the first note you play they're already into it they're already clapping yeah. you know Second, you come down, they're already jumping onto you, like, you know, yeah. <laughs> shaking your hand. Thanks for playing, thanks for playing. So it was very receptive. And from then on, I kind of moved towards the other open mics right. and started getting gigs. And now, let's just say it's a, a weekend afternoon, you're walking around the house. Now, we've already been into the influences of what you've heard when you were, you know, coming along, you were young. Um, what on your off time, what are you most likely to be listening to on your 78, 33, uh, cassette tape, 8-track, CD player, mm -hmm. iPod, or computer? <laughs> All right. Um, Depending on your chosen mode of media. Uh, I try my best to always have music playing. Mm -hmm. So wherever it is, in my car, in my, my barracks room, my phone, yeah. it's always playing. But... Um, I use, when, when I listen to a CD, um, I listen to it like over and over again. I kill it. Yeah. And John Coltrane actually said this, that when you listen to a song, you can't just listen to it and judge it right away. Right. You have to listen to, um, you just listen to the drums, just the drums, mm -hmm. then listen to it over again, just the bass, then just the, right. listen to each part individually, then you listen to the whole thing. And... You, you get to learn so much from a single song and, you know, like one verse and another verse. Like, you, this, the little subtleties, the little differences makes, makes that much, you know, yeah. more power to mm -hmm. the music. So, let's say for the past few weeks I've been listening to uh, this band called the Junior Astronomers. Mm -hmm. It's a group for, from North Carolina. Real uh, fast-paced rock, but right. kind of still, uh, kind of still poppy. Mm -hmm. So I list, I've been listening to that album for like probably three, four weeks straight. It wow. doesn't leave the, the CD player in the car, and like all my friends that come into the car, they just get sick of it. Cause, <laughs> this you know, again? This exactly, <laughs> and just goes loops, looping and looping and looping. <laughs> And eventually, I just I get bored of it. Mm -hmm. When I when I hear that, huh, I just don't. Yeah. Want it. <laughs> yeah. And I won't listen it for, to it for, you know, for months, maybe years, because mm -hmm. I already know everything. There. Right. Yeah. So that's that's been my process of listening. But right now, what I have in my car is a guitar player, Guthrie Govan. Mm -hmm. Hands down, best guitar player I've heard who's wow. alive right now. Man. Technically speaking. Yeah. But Guthrie Govan. And Snoop Dogg, Doggy Style, the album, and what else do I have in my car? I, th I think I have a Led Zeppelin CD in my car. Led Zeppelin 4. And that's it. Until I get sick of those, I'm yeah. going to throw them out and three new CDs. You know. Very cool. I'll tell you what, let's have a listen to some more of Miguel's music, and we'll be back after this. Uh, this next song is called December. Let's see if it works out well.
on sinking Find a way to open your eyes And take a breath And find yourself The starlight we will only matter to you and dream your heart to silence till I no longer matter to you. Hello and welcome back to this edition of Minstrels on the Block. Special guest, Mr. Miguel Juarez. So, Miguel, this is the part of the show where we like to pimp stuff. This is the shameless self-promotion part of the show. Whew. So, what do you have that you want everybody out there in TV land to uh, know about? All right. Um, like I said, I'm playing with my band, Life Unlimited. And we should have a couple of gigs on January. None that I know of right now because... It's, it's a weird process. And <laughs> I'm also playing with a band, um, what's it called? Chemistry. Chemistry with, the, with the Eric Buchanan on drums and Cynthia on vocals. I think we're playing Belouz. Belouz, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we're playing Belouz on the 25th and 26th. I'm not sure yet, but... You want to catch that show? Yeah. Great bar, great, great band. And I do a, a few gigs with David Banks' group at the Loft. Um, that's a tentative schedule. So I really don't know when we play. And who else do I play with? That's about it. 
I'll play a lot of open mics with Brian and with Trip sometimes and with, uh, what's his name, and Del Ranch too. Oh, Henry Connolly. Henry. But I haven't been at Del Ranch in a while, so yeah. I'm trying to get that back. Now, for, you know, for the dates that you don't know right now, you can always post on your Facebook page. So mm -hmm. what, what's your Facebook page? Um, I don't really have a, like, I don't know my Facebook page. You can just look for Miguel Juarez and Miguel, that's me. Miguel Juarez Facebook, he is on my friends list. So mm -hmm. if you're not on my friends list, get on my friends list and you can find Miguel. Find the shows that are coming up. Yeah. And if you can't find me through there, you can type in Miguel Antonio Juarez and that should pop up. Oh, cool. Yeah. Excellent. So a couple of questions I like to ask, and we, we, we've gone over this briefly, but to, to get it all in one area, what is your personal view of the local music scene in the Valley area? Well, I love the music scene here. I love it. And it, as long as it keeps going, you know, as long as people keep playing, people keep supporting the local music. Mm -hmm. And the one thing, well, one thing that's important, the kids. Kids, you gotta play. You gotta support the music scene. I can't do this on my own. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, as long as, you know, musicians keep coming out and they keep playing what they personally like, you know. Now, for the overall scene, of course, the, the, the kids, we definitely get the kids out. And, and we, we try to do that at Fountain City Coffee Shop because it's, it's mm -hmm. the only all ages, you know, we get a lot of, of under 21 playing there. And hopefully as they become, you know, legal, they will merge into the other aspects. But what would you, what, how do you think the local music scene could be improved? What would you like to see happen in this area? Hmm. Well, definitely more gigs. Like a lot more, like event type gigs, you know, mm -hmm. like st big stage and oh, lots yeah. of musicians playing, not just because uh, from from what I've seen here is uh, like a lot of bars mm -hmm. and there's regulars there, you know, and that's that's about it. There's a few open mics, but mostly those musicians who are already established, mm -hmm. they're the only ones who get to play. Right. You know, and these kids, um, they they jump into the coffee shop and you know do their thing there, but like I said, there's still not enough. Right. Either there's not enough time to play, not enough places to play, or it's well, I hope not, but it could be that there's not enough motivation on the sides of the mm -hmm. musicians. But I really hope not. You know, yeah. I hope it's just. The, the, a matter of finding places to play yeah. and people to hook you up, you know. Yeah. Now, we've all been in, 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 in the, the, this one place where, where before you get out there and you start playing, we've all been an aspiring musician, aspiring artist, and hopefully we've got a good many watching the show. So what would you say, what advice would you give to an aspiring artist, musician, uh, who wants to get out there and do it, but is still going through the steps, what advice would you give to an aspiring artist watching the show? Listen, listen, listen. That's it. Just keep on listening to whatever music you can find. Even if it's not music, even if it's just, you know, even if it's a lame excuse for a song. Right. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, see what you can hear from it, you know, see what you can get from it, what you can pick up. Even if it's a, like a really cliche, pop corny mm -hmm. song, cliches don't become cliches without being good first. Right, you know? right. So you can pick, pick something up from that, mm -hmm. you know. So just keep on listening. If, like you said, if it's a, a new kid just walking around seeing mm -hmm. the scene, yeah. trying to take it all in. Keep taking it all in, you know, don't be afraid to walk into a bar and, you know, just listen. Just I'd say, uh, even if you're underage, just because I remember when I couldn't get inside bars, mm -hmm. I, I would still, not because I was underage, because I didn't have money for the cover charge. <laughs> <laughs> you just, 
I just stay outside, you know. I would stay outside, hope that the doors open. Yeah. You know, watch the musicians from outside, listen, mm -hmm. and eventually you'd you'd get the enough um, confidence to mm, yeah. jump in there and play. Very cool. And when you've passed that stage of just walking around and you you actually start playing, a lot of people stop playing after their first three gigs because. Mm -hmm. They didn't get what the the reaction they wanted, you know, or something they messed up and they're they just you know can't can't handle the rejection or they just get shy. They get embarrassed with the stuff they do, their faults. But what you gotta remember is those faults are your faults, you know. They they're uh, they're they're part of you. They're what helps you improve to be, you know, what you actually want to sound like. Right, right. That one fault, that one wrong note is a step closer to that right note right. that you want to hear, you know. <laughs> keep making mistakes, keep playing, keep making mistakes, keep making faults, and that's the only way you'll find what you really want to hear. Right. You know? So just keep listening and keep playing, that's it. Don't let anything stop you from playing. Good information, good advice from a very good musician. Miguel, I appreciate you coming on the I show. appreciate you. Great interview, and I uh, hope you've enjoyed this edition of Minstrels on the Block. I'm your host, Brian Mallard. See you next time, only on CTVEA. This song is called Bag Full of Blues. She's got a bag full of blues She doesn't care if you give it Doesn't care if you don't She seems satisfied with what she has So why, why does she go While this searching Maybe she's looking for just a little mom blues As she goes around Playing around town Doing everything that you desire you say she's got everything you've ever wanted Maybe she thinks you do Maybe she wants to be like you into trouble so why oh why oh why does she play around for nothing when she's got everything maybe
maybe she's playing for just a little more, just a little more blues. And she goes out there searching, seemingly, seemingly nothing. Maybe she's, maybe she's running, maybe she's running. Maybe she's running out of blues.